One of DC's most famous television shows, The Flash, has some interesting villains that challenge the Scarlet Speedster to the extremes. Villains such as Reverse Flash, Anti-Monitor, Savitar and Zoom prove to be adversaries whom Barry cannot defeat alone if he wants to get out alive and this is portrayed well over the span of 8 seasons. Each season has a new problem and a villain with it to help Flash grow as a superhero and as a person and also for some good entertaining fight scenes that can be watched on repeat. Here is a list of every antagonist that Flash has ever encountered that we have curated for you all. So why wait? Let's get into it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Well, if you're out, you're out. Captain Cold Leonard Snart's early years were tumultuous, marked by tragedy and hardship. Losing his mother at a young age left him and his younger sister Lisa to be raised solely by their father. However, their father, unable to cope with his wife's passing, turned to alcohol and physical abuse, making life unbearable for the siblings. Leonard's only respite was when their loving grandfather would invite them to visit him at the ice factory where he worked. The cold atmosphere offered Leonard a symbol of solace from his turbulent home life, and he grew to cherish it deeply. As Leonard grew into adulthood, he used his sharp intellect to pursue a life of crime, becoming a skilled thief. Despite Lisa's potential as an ice skating prodigy, Leonard was fiercely protective of her and convinced her to join him on his dark path. Stealing a cold gun for his schemes in Central City, Leonard adopted the alias Captain Cold and soon found himself at odds with the city's newest hero, The Flash. In a bid to survive, Leonard and Lisa teamed up with other members of Flash's rogues gallery, forming a group that appropriately called themselves The Rogues. Despite his troubled upbringing, Leonard possessed exceptional abilities beyond his cold gun, such as advanced martial arts skills and a remarkable tolerance for pain, particularly in freezing temperatures. In season one of the popular comic book series, The Flash, Captain Cold, made his debut as one of the show's most formidable villains. Later, he became a member of the Legends of Tomorrow crew. Though Captain Cold is a fierce adversary, he is not the most powerful in the Arrowverse, as other superpowered villains outrank him. Nonetheless, his cold gun remains a force to be reckoned with, granting granting him the ability to freeze objects and people at will. Why do they call you people the heat? I'm the heat! Heatwave Heatwave used to be one of the strongest characters in the Legends of Tomorrow series, but has lost most of his powers over time. He was initially a villain in the Flash series, but later became a hero and a significant character in Legends of Tomorrow through the multiverse concept. As a child, Mick Rory developed a fascination with fire, which eventually turned into an obsession. He set his family's house on fire, and his obsession continued to escalate until he locked a schoolmate in his house and set it on fire, causing him to run away from home. He later took up a job as a fire eater in a traveling circus, but ended up setting the entire circus on fire. Mick Rory also suffers from cryophobia, a fear of cold temperatures, which he developed after being locked in a freezer by one of his friends during a school field trip. He decided to use his pyromania to become a villain and created a protective suit made of asbestos, which he used to commit crimes in Central City. He regularly clashed with the Flash and ended up in jail many times. Captain Cold introduced him to the rogues and they teamed up to get rid of the Flash. However, they were both jailed after their plan failed. Despite his past as a villain, Heatwave eventually became a hero and a valuable member of the Legends of Tomorrow team. Mick Rory has a genius level intellect and has built all of his fire and heat based technology himself. He is even capable of inventing powerful substances like ultra steam that can melt down a person's energy on contact. This substance is so potent that it once even ignited the cell of the Flash on a microscopic level. Mick's intelligence also helped him realize that he was being mind-controlled by Edward Hobart and he was able to obtain evidence to prove it. In addition to his impressive intellect, Mike is also a tactical thinker. 
he was able to come up with a plan that not only outsmarted the Flash, but also led to him discovering the Flash's secret identity. This made him the second member of the rogues to uncover the Flash's true identity while he was still alive. Mick is proficient in using firearms and has basic skills in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Despite being an average athlete, he managed to knock out his former cellmate and friend, Wiley, with a single punch. He also defeated Murmur in a fight before Captain Cold intervened. Aside from his combat skills, Mick is also skilled in disguise. He has successfully disguised himself in various situations to achieve his goals. Now you'll feel the real power of speed! Godspeed. Godspeed was a villain with the ability to steal the speed energy from other speedsters, making him faster than ever before. This made him a formidable opponent for the Flash, especially as he had multiple time clones who started a war among themselves, which increased the danger for Barry Allen and his family. One of Barry's colleagues, August Hart, became a speedster after being struck by lightning from a speed force storm. August became Barry's partner and wanted to use his powers to solve his brother's murder. Together, they defeated the Black Hole and witnessed another Speed Force storm that turned more citizens into speedsters. August helped Barry to round up any new speedsters who used their powers for criminal activity. However, when Godspeed arrived and started killing speedster criminals and stealing their speed, August became suspicious. When he discovered that Godspeed had killed his brother's murderer, August realized that he was God speed himself. He had given up on the justice system and decided to become judge, jury and executioner. August revealed that when he was near the speedster criminals, he could feel the speed force within them connecting with him. He decided to take their powers from them, resulting in their deaths and August being injured. After teaming up with the Flash and other speedsters to stop Godspeed, August later also teamed up with the Flash and his nemesis, Eobard Thorne, to stop the villain Paradox from erasing all of Flash's history. However, Thorne gleefully admitted to killing August's brother and snapped August's neck. Despite Godspeed's power, Team Flash's experience with dealing with speedster villains allowed them to defeat him. It is suggested that if Godspeed had attacked earlier in his career, he might have beaten Barry more easily. Godspeed gained a connection to the Speed Force after being struck by a bolt of lightning during a Speed Force storm. As a Speed Force conduit, he can tap into the excess energy that builds up and needs to be released, and he can use this energy to run at incredible superhuman speeds with superhuman stamina, agility, reflexes, strength, and durability. The Speed Force also enhances his senses, and allows him to accelerate his own molecules, become intangible or phase through objects, and create strong vortexes of wind. Godspeed is highly creative when it comes to the speed force, and he is able to figure out how to steal speed from other speedsters, create constructs, and be in two places at once. He can also travel through dimensions and time with the aid of his speed force gauntlet. Reverse Flash The Reverse Flash is a prominent villain in both the Arrowverse and DC Comics. Unlike other speedsters who rely on the speed force, Eobard Thorne gained his powers by recreating the same accident that gave Barry Allen his super speed. However, Thorne's connection to the negative speed force which he created sets him apart from other speedsters. Eobard Thorne, also known as the Reverse Flash and Professor Zoom, first appeared in The Flash number 139 in 1963. He is the archenemy of Barry Allen, the second character to become the Flash, and a descendant of Malcolm Thorne. Additionally, Thorne is one of the fastest speedsters in the DC Universe and is the forefather of several other characters, including Bart Allen, Thaddeus Thorne, and Owen Mercer. Thorne is a scientist from the 25th century who became obsessed with and idolized Barry Allen. He managed to replicate the accident that gave Barry his powers, but his discovery that he was destined to become become Barry's greatest enemy drove him insane. Fueled by jealousy and hatred, he became the Reverse Flash and used his connection to the negative speed force to manipulate time to his advantage. Despite having the same abilities as Barry, Thorne was much more experienced with them since he was the one who trained Barry while posing as Harrison Wells. However, after years of being the Flash, Barry eventually became equally skilled and most of their battles ended in draws. Eobard gained access to the speed force 
and later created a machine that connected him to the negative speed force, greatly augmenting his physiology. As a result, he became one of the most powerful beings in the multiverse, with powers including accelerated healing, longevity, bodily vibration, intangibility, electrokinesis, flight, and superhuman durability. He lost his powers after being stripped of his connection to the negative speed force by Barry, but regained some of them after some time. Soon, Hunter Zolomon was a notorious serial killer from Earth 2 who gained access to the speed force while undergoing electroshock therapy. This gave him incredible speed and a host of other abilities which he used to make a name for himself as the supervillain Zoom. Eventually, Hunter grew tired of being a villain and decided to become a hero by assuming the identity of Jay Garrick, borrowing the name from another speedster that he had kept as a prisoner. However, his true motive was to increase Barry Allen's speed so that he could eventually take it for himself. Hunter arrived on Earth 1 and posed as a friend and mentor to Barry, teaching him how to use his powers and even giving him tips on how to throw lightning. He also developed a romantic relationship with Caitlin Snow. Hunter killed a time remnant of himself to give Barry a reason to avenge Jay and increase his speed even further, but his true identity was soon discovered by the team. In an attempt to break Barry emotionally, Hunter murdered his father, Henry Allen, which indirectly led to a change in the timeline. Line. After losing a race to Barry and attempting to destroy the multiverse, Hunter was imprisoned in the Speed Force by Time Wraiths and transformed into the Black Flash. This gave him the power to drain people of their life force with a touch, which even scared Flash villain Eobard Thorne. Prior to this transformation, Hunter had also used velocity serums to artificially increase his speed to the point where he could break the dimensional barrier. Despite having the same powers as Barry, Hunter was seemingly more experienced, which made him a formidable opponent. Hunter Zolomon gained a connection to the Speed Force after being affected by the particle accelerator while receiving electroshock treatment. His DNA was altered and his cells supercharged with enormous amounts of electricity, augmenting his physiology to a superhuman condition. Hunter had the ability to vibrate his cells on command, move and vibrate any part of his body so fast that he could phase through people or objects and could kill any speedster he touches by phasing his hands onto their chests. After his transformation by the time rates, Hunter gained the ability to cause cellular decay and drain people of life through physical contact. He could also absorb speed force energy and had enhanced mental and sensory capabilities, superhuman strength and durability, and the ability to change his eye color to black to conceal his identity. He also had the ability to sense the speed force in another speedster system to track them down. Bloodwork. Ramsey Rosso, also known as Bloodwork, is a notorious criminal in Central City. He possesses the unique ability to control blood and transform into a blood monster, making him a formidable adversary to the Flash. Ramsey's tragic backstory includes the death of his mother from HLH, which prompted him to create an experimental cure for the disease that he injected into himself. This cure bonded with dark matter, resulting in Ramsey becoming a metahuman with the power to manipulate blood. Ramsey's powers extended beyond the ability to control blood. He can bring people back to life as zombies and control their minds. At one point, he even infected the Flash, gaining full control over his abilities. Additionally, Ramsey can transform into a colossal creature made entirely of blood, making him even more dangerous. As a child, Ramsey was treated delicately due to his hemophilia, a condition that he discovered when he almost died from blood loss after an injury on the playground. As an adult, he worked at the Central City Morgue and began experimenting with blood properties, which led him to gaining his powerful abilities and adopting his moniker, Bloodwork. When The Flash discovered Ramsey stealing evidence, he attempted to stop him, only to be met with intense pain due to Ramsey's blood control abilities. Later, Ramsey was invited to join the Legion of Zoom, a group created by the Reverse Flash to unite the Flash's most prominent adversaries and to defeat him. Ramsey Rosso's experimentation with blood led him to developing a unique sense of abilities. He discovered that by experimenting on his blood with different blood types, he could transform his flesh into a blood-like physiology. This transformation allows him to control blood, congeal it, and make the blood of others burn. 
Bloodwork also claims to be invulnerable and The Flash confirmed this by projecting lightning at him without causing any harm. This ability suggests that Bloodwork possesses an extraordinary level of durability. Bloodwork's powers extend beyond just controlling blood. He can generate blood and morph it into different constructs, such as tendrils and organs, which can spread and feed off their surroundings. Additionally, his blood can reform into veins and arteries, which can coil around vast urban areas, infecting anyone who comes in contact with it. The higher his blood pressure, the faster and farther his blood can reach. King Shark is a formidable opponent in the Flash TV show, where his immense physical strength is his greatest asset. However, he lacks the unique abilities possessed by some of the series' other powerful villains. As a hybrid of a great white shark and a human named Shea Lambden, King Shark has extraordinary capabilities, including superhuman strength, speed, and durability, which he effectively uses to battle the Flash. Moreover, he has a remarkable healing factor that makes him highly resistant to injury. Although King Shark is primarily primarily known as a Flash adversary, he has also been featured in several comics with more positive storylines. He possesses a range of superhuman characteristics including accelerated healing, electrolocation, superhuman durability, superhuman speed, speed swimming, superhuman strength, telepathy immunity, and the ability to breathe underwater. King Shark's unique abilities make him almost invincible as he can sense bioelectricity, heal from injuries quickly, breathe underwater, and withstand high levels of physical damage. He is also immune to Grodd's psychic powers, has superhuman speed and strength that enables him to take on powerful opponents. Speed Force The Speed Force has always been a loyal supporter of Barry Allen and other speedsters who have guarded it. Nevertheless, its loyalty was put to the test, and it assumed the persona of Nora Allen to carry out its mission of eliminating the other forces. This move was unexpected and caught Team Flash off guard, making it impossible for them to thwart her efforts. Being the Speed Force itself, this antagonist was one of the most formidable opponents Barry had ever encountered. She held complete control over the source of his powers, which gave her immense power. Eventually, she realized her wrongdoing, but defeating the Speed Force, a universal entity, was an possible feat. The Speed Force is a source of infinite energy that connects all universes within the DC multiverse. Those who have access to it possess various abilities, mainly revolving around speed. These abilities include running at superhuman speeds, manipulating airflow, vibrating their bodies to intangibility and phase, traveling through time and dimensions, and possessing heightened physical and mental capabilities. The Speed Force also emits electricity in various colors, which can be manipulated to create power arcs, energy constructs, and even heal others. Some advanced applications of the Speed Force include time manipulation, speed stealing and lending, and the creation of energy copies. Conduits of the Speed Force can also be granted other power sets, such as age manipulation and atomic inhibition. If the Speed Force ever becomes destabilized, it could have catastrophic consequences for the Omniverse. Cicada 1 Orlin Dwyer, also known by the name Cicada, is the central villain in the fifth season of The Flash. This season is set within the Arrowverse, which is a shared fictional universe that includes other popular TV shows such as Arrow and Supergirl. Dwyer is a serial killer who has been enhanced by dark matter, and he specifically targets individuals who are classified as metahumans. His motivation for doing so is to honor and avenge his family, which has been affected by the actions of metahumans. Dwyer is armed with a dagger that has a distinctive lightning bolt shape, and this weapon is capable of preventing metahumans from using their powers. The dagger is also telekinetically controlled by Dwyer, allowing him to call it back to himself and prevent others from using it against him. The dagger was created as a result of an event known as the Enlightenment, which occurred when a shard of the Star Lab satellite containing dark matter struck Dwyer. As a result of this event, Dwyer gained a range of enhanced abilities. These include increased strength and the ability to fly. He also gained a connection to the lightning-shaped dagger, which is able to negate the powers of nearby metahumans who have been affected by dark matter. This means that Dwyer was able to strip the powers of well-known metahumans like the Flash, Vibe, and Elon man, leaving them vulnerable. However, Dwyer was unable to affect metahumans like Frost, whose powers do not stem from dark matter. As a result, she was the only member of the team who posed a real threat to him, even with his powerful dagger.
Cicada 2. Alan Dwyer had almost given up his mission as the villainous Cicada on the TV series The Flash, but a new character named Grace Gibbons appeared in Central City to continue the mission. Grace is the niece of Orlin from the future and is a major antagonist in the show, serving as an unseen character in seasons 3 and 4, one of the two main antagonists of season 5 and a posthumous antagonist in season 6. She is the second person to bear the Cicada mantle and has a more vicious personality and superior skills than her uncle. Her mission is to kill all metahumans and it gets wrapped up in her identity. Entity. Grace's mission begins with revenge for her injury and a broken heart, but it evolves into her reason for living. She is more powerful than her uncle and has skills that he doesn't have. Her presence poses a significant threat to Team Flash and she becomes a force to be reckoned with for the rest of the season. Cicada 2 wants Orlin to become her partner in crime, while Orlin's motivation to kill Metas was rooted in the death of his family and Grace's injury. Now he has a human motive to protect Grace and be close to her. Grace's physiology has has been altered by a dark matter-infused shard, granting her powers that evolve to become similar to cicadas but more potent and versatile. The shard has also created a mental protection field and a mental connection with Nora West Allen, but the connection is severed after Grace takes the metahuman cure. Grace can control dark matter, generating red electricity and force fields, and can also negate metahuman powers. She has superhuman strength and reflexes, ergo kinesis, and can fly at breakneck speeds. Her psionic connection to her uncle's lightning dagger is stronger than his and she can telekinetically manipulate it, lock it onto targets, track metahumans and generate red electricity blasts. Yes. The Thinker Clifford DeVoe, a brilliant mind, made the decision to put on the thinking cap during the particle accelerator catastrophe. The cap was a helmet-shaped device that boosted his already impressive intellect to a whole new level. Despite his newfound knowledge and expertise, DeVoe was unable to overcome the physical limitations of his ALS, which left him wheelchair-bound. Nevertheless, he utilized his exceptional intellect to solve some of history's most complex problems. DeVoe also gained a range of superpowers by assimilating the ability of 12 metahumans who were on a bus that was exposed to dark matter, including the elasticity of Ralph Dibney. He was endowed with various abilities such as technopathy, which allowed him to manipulate technology, the ability to create portals, alter his size, and much more. With his heightened intelligence and new powers, DeVoe became an intimidating adversary for Team Flash, outmaneuvering them at almost every opportunity. Despite his incredible intellect and powers, Barry and Ralph were ultimately able to defeat DeVoe by delving into his mind. The two heroes joined forces and penetrated DeVoe's psyche, exploiting his vulnerabilities and ultimately achieving victory. The conflict between DeVoe and Team Flash was one of the most memorable in the show's history, demonstrating the amazing abilities of the human mind and spirit. It was a testament to the power of teamwork, determination and persistence. Flash. Reports indicate that the Black Flash has been seen by various speedsters before their death, such as Barry Allen, John Quick, and Max Mercury. The reason for the existence of the Black Flash is uncertain. It could be due to traditional death being unable to capture speedsters or a strange side effect of their connection to the Speed Force. Wally West encountered the Black Flash when it attempted to draw him back into the Speed Force, but instead of him, his girlfriend Linda Park got taken away. Later, the Black Flash returned to take Wally once again, but Wally was able to defeat it by racing to the end of time where death had no meaning, causing the Black Flash to dissipate. The Black Flash also appeared to Bart Allen, the fourth Flash, before his death at the hands of the rogues. Barry Allen later became the new Black Flash after the previous one was found apparently dead. However, the title was then taken by Professor Zoom in his corpse Black Lantern form. The Black Flash, being an aspect of death for speedsters, draws power from the speed force. According to Max Mercury, even one touch from the Black Flash can cause instant death. The Black Flash has a multitude of superhuman abilities such as superhuman speed, reflexes, durability, agility, stamina, and enhanced senses. He can easily travel to and from the speed force, generate large amounts of electricity, and use his claws for combat. Furthermore, he can absorb speed force energy to enhance himself, move fast enough to create holes in the fabric of time and space for time travel, freeze time, and become intangible by vibrating his body at a specific frequency. The Black Flash, being an aspect of death, cannot be killed by ordinary means. Sabotage. 
Savitar is a notorious villain from the DC Comics universe who makes his debut in the third season of The Flash TV series. He is actually a time remnant of Barry Allen who separated from the original Flash and developed an existence of its own. Gradually, Savitar became corrupted and created a metallic suit of armor that provided him several advantages over Barry. This suit was incredibly durable and had the ability to deflect bullets and withstand hits from other speedsters and metahumans such as Wally, Killer Frost and Barry himself. Additionally, Savitar Savitar's suit contained two concealed blades in the wrists, which were the only things capable of damaging the armor. However, Savitar was no more powerful than any other speedster without the suit, and it was this vulnerability that led to his downfall when Iris was able to shoot and kill him. Initially, Barry Allen created Savitar to defeat the supervillain Zoom, but the time remnant was horrifically scarred during the process. After Savitar developed a god complex, he renamed himself and turned against Team Flash, leading to his banishment in the Speed Force. This only exacerbated his insanity, and with the help of Dr. Alchemy, Savitar managed to escape. He spent the third season of The Flash devising a plan to destroy his younger self by murdering Iris, believing it would prevent the creation of time remnants. Despite his unique and striking appearance, Savitar's character is not adequately developed. His reasons for becoming a villain are unclear, and his personality comes across as childish and immature rather than dark and tortured. Although Savitar was successful in killing H.R. Wells, he failed to execute his plan to kill Iris, and his own death was underwhelming. Killer Frost Killer Frost is an important villain in The Flash, appearing in both the comics and in the Arrowverse. Her powers are similar to those of Mr. Freeze, and her backstory adds depth to her character, making her an interesting antagonist. One of Killer Frost's most notable abilities is her power to absorb latent energy from objects and people, which she can use to lower the temperature of her surroundings. This creates a frosty environment that can make it difficult for her enemies to navigate. Aside from this impressive ability, Killer Frost has several other powers that make her a formidable opponent. For example, she can create ice-based objects such as weapons or defensive structures to use in combat. She can also emit cold mist and air, which can obscure her movements and make it challenging for her opponent to locate her. Killer Frost can also breathe ice-cold air, which can freeze objects and even incapacitate her enemies. Killer Frost's ability to fly by generating a blast of cold air is another remarkable feat that sets her apart from other villains. This unique skill allows her to move quickly and evade her opponents, making her an even more dangerous, challenging foe. However, while she's a powerful villain, other antagonists in the Flash universe possess more mind or speed-based abilities and are generally considered more powerful than her. Despite this, Killer Frost remains a fascinating and intriguing adversary for the Flash and his allies. Grodd In the world of the Flash series, Grodd stands out as one of the most formidable villains thanks to the experiments performed on him by the scientists at Star Labs. These experiments imbued Grodd with telepathic abilities that exceed human imagination. His powers allow him to manipulate the minds of individuals, giving him a significant advantage in battle. This has earned him the title of the most potent telepath on the planet. Even the formidable Despero and John Jones cannot compete with his mental abilities. Grodd's mental powers are so potent that even Cisco had to design specialized AI adaptive meta dampeners specifically to keep up with the growth of his powers. Despite his incredible physical strength, it is his unmatched mental capabilities that make him a fearsome foe. Moreover, he can protect himself from any form of telepathic attack, making him nearly invincible. Grodd's unparalleled telepathic abilities are what sets him apart from other villains in the Flash series. His ability to take control of people's minds and make them do his bidding makes him a potent adversary. Using these powers, he can control humans, overwhelm their minds with negative memories, and easily discern their intentions and mental states. His telepathic defenses make him a challenging enemy to defeat. Apart from his telepathic abilities, Grodd is also incredibly strong and resilient, making him one of the most robust characters in the Arrowverse. His physical strength and durability enable him to withstand even the most formidable attacks. For instance, he was able to harness Barry Allen's speed force powers briefly by infiltrating his mind, making him an even more potent enemy. Mirror Master Eva Mikolo, a famous CEO, was presumed dead after being trapped in the Mirrorverse for six years. During this time, Eva relentlessly tried to escape, but it wasn't until she brought Iris with her that she managed to break free. During her time in the Mirrorverse, Eva developed a unique power, the ability to control mirrors. With this power, she could create mirror clones of characters trapped in the dimension, like Camille, Captain Singh, and Iris to carry out her missions. 
Eva's suit also had special features, including arms that could turn into blasters and the ability to use mirrors as portals for teleportation. With her immense abilities, Eva was able to defeat Team Flash and even kill her own husband. In Season 6, Iris found herself trapped in the same dimension as Eva, known as the Mirrorverse. At first, Eva appeared to be a friendly person who also wanted to escape the dimension. However, it became clear that Eva had an ulterior motive to replace everyone on Earth with mirror duplicates and rule as a mirror monarch. Despite this, Iris was able to connect with Eva on a personal level and convince her to abandon her plan. Eva destroyed her duplicates and returned to the Mirrorverse. While Eva had a vengeful personality and powerful abilities, she was not inherently evil. Her madness was a result of a long time spent in the Mirrorverse and her ultimate goal was to make the world a better place. During their time together, Eva grew to care for Iris and she was willing to listen to her to abandon her plan for ruling the world. Anti-Monitor The Anti-Monitor was an immensely powerful being who possessed the ability to annihilate the multiverse. Despite the assistance of skilled superhero Barry Allen, it was an impossible feat to defeat the Anti-Monitor alone. Green Arrow had to make the ultimate sacrifice to defeat him, and that was a pretty sad sight to see. Mobius was an antimatter copy of Mar Novu, and his powers were akin to those that Novu acquired when exposed to chronal radiation. Mobius was even more potent than Novu, making him one of the most dominant entities across the entire multiverse. Mobius could easily overpower the Paragons and numerous other heroes of the world, and only a shrinking bomb could defeat him. His understanding of reality was vast, and his telepathic and telekinetic abilities were impressive. Mobius was capable of bestowing powers onto others, manipulating energy and generating force fields. He could manipulate gravity, generate earthquakes, and even enlarge his own body. Mobius could traverse through different dimensions, and he had lived since the beginning of time. Since he was immortal, death could not defeat him. The Anti-Monitor proved to be an indomitable presence to Team Flash, and his knowledge was so ancient that they could not even comprehend it. Though the Anti-Monitor was eventually vanquished, there remained a possibility of his return in the future. Weather Wizard Mark Marden, also known as Weather Wizard, is a meta-human who was gifted with his incredible abilities following the particle accelerator explosion at Star Labs. He had a younger brother named Clyde Marden, who also gained similar powers from the same event. After the explosion, the dark matter wave altered Mark's DNA and supercharged his cells, giving him the remarkable ability to control the weather with immense precision and power. After his capture by the Flash, Mark was held in the Star Labs pipeline until he was freed by Leonard Snow and Lisa Snart. Later on, Mark freed Snart and James Jesse from the rogues, but they were eventually defeated by the Flash and sent to Iron Heights prison. Mark's powers come from his mastery of various fields, including atmokinesis, cryokinesis, hydrokinesis, and thermokinesis. His atmokinesis allows him to create small tornadoes or generate massive tidal waves capable of destroying entire cities. His cryokinesis enables him to freeze air molecules and create powerful ice balls. His hydrokinesis lets him control water and create massive tsunamis to attack his enemies. His thermokinesis allows him to manipulate the temperature of his surroundings to his advantage. He can even fly by creating strong drafts of wind underneath him. Apart from his extraordinary powers, Mark is also known for his strategic mind and deep knowledge of the criminal underworld. He demonstrated his tactical abilities by orchestrating a jailbreak to recruit Leonard Snart and James Jesse for his plan to kill the Flash. However, Snart refused to work with him, and Mark's plan failed. Mark is also a skilled pilot, having been able to fly planes with expertise. Captain Boomerang Digger Harkness was a multi-talented individual who served as a member of the Australian Secret Intelligence Service, ASIS, before earning the moniker of Captain Boomerang. He was highly skilled in the use of boomerangs as weapons and was regarded as a force to be reckoned with due to his exceptional fighting skills and physical prowess. He had worked with Task Force X in the past and was also an ally of Prometheus' team, demonstrating his value as a powerful ally. Aside from his expertise, with boomerangs, Digger was also highly skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat and martial arts. He displayed his talents by taking down multiple armed guards with ease and engaging in a battle against Arrow, Arsenal, John Diggle, and Lila Michaels. Although he was ultimately overpowered, Digger put up a strong fight and demonstrated his skills by cutting all the arrows fired at him. As an expert marksman, he can throw his boomerangs with precision and accuracy. He is known to use them during firefights, skillfully throwing them over his opponent's cover and striking them in the back.
black. Digger is also a skilled tactician who possesses a high level of intelligence using his knowledge of Argus to nearly succeed in his mission to kill Lila Michaels. He even outsmarted Oliver who was renowned for his genius and strategic thinking. Digger's skills in explosives are also remarkable. He was able to rig five connected bombs to detonate in different locations throughout Star City making sure they had to be diffused simultaneously. He even uses specialized grooves in his boomerangs to create explosive effects on impact, functioning like grenades. Digger's arsenal includes his edged boomerangs, exploding boomerangs and a Colt M1911A1 pistol given to him by Prometheus. The Trickster James Jesse, also known as The Trickster, is a villain in the TV series The Flash. He appears in seasons 1 and 2 and his Earth 3 counterpart is introduced in season 3. The character is based on the DC Comics supervillain Trickster. The original Trickster, Giovanni Giuseppe, was a practical joker and con man who enjoyed using items like explosive teddy bears to harm his enemies. James Jesse's alter ego is a circus acrobat who turned to a life of crime inspired by his reverse namesake, Jesse James. He creates special shows that allow him to walk on air and other dangerous gadgets to aid his criminal activities. The Flash, Barry Allen, is one of his many enemies and they have clashed multiple times. In their first encounter, The Flash identified Jesse's Harley Quinn costume and captured him by pogo sticking to the trapeze. Following Barry Allen's death, the trickster moved from Central City to Hollywood where he worked in special effects. He attempted to steal the Blue Devil suit from Dan Cassidy but was ultimately defeated. Jesse later befriended Cassidy when he became trapped in the suit, relying on him to help him resist the urge to continue his life of crime. Apart from being intelligent enough to cause havoc all over a city, Trickster always has explosives at his disposal just to mess with people whenever he wants. And of course, true to his name, he is also a master at trickery. Golden Glider Lisa Snart, also known as the Golden Glider, is the sister of Captain Cold and a villain herself. Initially, Lisa was perceived as the girlfriend of Sam Scudder, also known as Mirror Master, and the younger sister of Leonard Snart, also known as Captain Cold. However, during an experiment that aimed to rewrite the weapon powers of the rogues into their own DNA, Lisa was caught in an explosion that granted everyone their powers. She almost died from a brain tumor but survived after the power was restored and the tumor was removed. Lisa later appeared in Guatemala in astral form and adopted the name Glider, recruiting Weather Wizard to create her own version of the rogues. She further recruited Heatwave, Turbine, the Trickster and Mirror Master to seek revenge on the Flash. She implanted a metal shard from the explosion that gave the rogues their powers into Dr. Elias during his presentation, attempting to steal his monorail and destroy his research and reputation. However, her plan was complicated by the arrival of the Pied Piper and Captain Cold. Gorilla Grodd's sudden appearance forced her to relinquish control of the rogues back to cold. Lisa's powers include superhuman speed, invisibility, intangibility, teleportation, flight, ribbon tendrils, and speed force navigation. She can also control her own molecular density and share her phasing powers in ghost form. And before her criminal life, she was an exceptional ice skater. Lisa possesses leadership skills and pedagogy. Dr. Alchemy. The villain Savitar used the persona of Alchemy to create metahumans in preparation for his arrival on different worlds. The title was given to Julian Albert on Earth 1 after he founded the Brahmastra in India, which was linked to Savitar's powers. Those possessed by Alchemy under the control of Savitar experienced blackouts and lost the memory of their actions. While under this guise, Savitar could speak through them to his followers and potential metahumans. When Savitar appeared, Alchemy ceased to speak but retained the ability to fight or escape. It's unclear which powers were granted by the Brahmastra and which ones were Savitar's own. He was able to enhance the powers of Metas as shown with Edward Claris. While under the control of Savitar, he displayed several powers as alchemy. He could carve the word alchemy into surfaces without touching them, though this might have been an hallucination. He could stop Flash's super speed and send him sliding across the floor with a wave of his hand. He had retrocognition, allowing him to remember the Flashpoint time line and could make others recall their alternate lives. He had telepathic connect with Savitar, enabling him to communicate with anyone regardless of their location. He could also use transmutation to biologically alter individuals and give them metahuman powers, leaving behind a husk in their place. There is uncertainty over whether he could take powers away from metas, but it's possible he could only do this with those he had granted powers to. 
Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra was a character in The Flash known by his real name Philippe. He presented himself as a magician, but he was actually a technologically advanced individual who used future technology to create his illusions. When The Flash managed to apprehend him, Abra Kadabra offered to reveal the identity of the nefarious Peter Savitar in exchange for his freedom. However, he was later apprehended by Gypsy and the Collectors. In the post-crisis storyline, Abra Kadabra returned with a new plan to save his wife and child by destroying Central City. However, the Flash persuaded him not to carry out this plan as it was unlikely to succeed. During Fuerza's attack on the city, Abracadabra unsuccessfully tried to stop her and ended up losing his life. Abracadabra was a powerful wizard who could accomplish almost anything with his magical spells. Initially, his powers were a result of his access to 64th century technology, which seemed like magic to the residents of the 20th century. Later, he made a deal with Meron and gained true sorcery, augmenting his already impressive abilities. Pied Piper Hartley Rathaway, also known as Pied Piper, is the son of Rachel and Osgood Rathaway. He used to work at Star Labs but was fired by Harrison Wells after trying to prevent the activation of the particle accelerator, which he believed was at risk of exploding. After being affected by the explosion, Hartley gained superhuman hearing and attempted to seek revenge on Wells by trying to kill Barry Allen, the Flash. He believed that Wells had replaced him with the Flash. Hartley was defeated by Barry and Wells and was reincarcerated. However, he knew the location of Ronnie Raymond and Cisco reluctantly agreed to work with Hartley to find him. They were successful, but Hartley used this opportunity to escape. After being struck by the particle accelerator explosion, Hartley's DNA was altered and his cells were supercharged, enhancing his ears and later his vocal cords. Hartley's superhuman hearing allows him to hear much better than a normal human, including radio waves and their frequencies. He also gained the ability to emit sonic screams after the crisis. His sonic scream has the same, if not greater, power intensity and frequency as his gauntlets, which also allow him to fly. In addition to his metahuman abilities, Hartley is also a genius and an expert in psychoacoustics and sonic vibrations. He possesses a keen tactical mind and is a capable computer hacker. He is also skilled in engineering and can fluently speak at least six languages, including English, Spanish, French, Latin, Japanese, and American Sign Language. Although he is aggressive in a fight and has fought off opponents, it is unclear as to what degree he is a skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatant. A former Tuskegee airman, Roscoe Hines, also known as Turbine, piloted a fleet of prototype warplanes on their first combat mission during World War II. Being the aviation buff that he was, he broke flight formation to test the aircraft's capabilities, and that's when he and his plane mysteriously vanished into thin air. However, he didn't just disappear. Instead, he was consumed by the Speed Force, one of the seven cosmic forces. Roscoe Hines remained trapped in the Speed Force dimension for approximately seven decades, until the Flash entered this dimension mentioned in a quest to search for a friend named Iris West, and that was when Heinz followed the Flash and escaped. During his time in the Speed Force, the Turbine gained super speed abilities. Whenever he tried to utilize them to free himself, Heinz ended up spinning fast, which caused devastating vortexes and time warps in the main universe. Heinz insisted that Flash take him back to his time, but Flash dragged him into the present instead, and that was where it all began. Roscoe gained the superhuman ability to spin his entire body at tremendous speed after being trapped in the Speed Force for decades. The turbine's superhuman spinning creates strong vortexes of wind. These vortexes can divert his enemy's attention, block oncoming assaults, and create distractions for his escape. The turbine may also easily fly or move quickly in the air by controlling his movements with the help of these vortexes. He can also use this ability to lift massive objects off the ground. The Changeling. In the 1940s, Raza was a small-time gangster, and he was soon overturned by Hull, who had a more significant influence in the game. However, Hull didn't stop there. He devised a conspiracy against Raza, sending him to prison. Raza was breaking out of jail through the power plant. He tampered with the electrical panel, which sent a powerful electrical charge through his body. The charge allowed him to transform into an animal, which he used to escape prison. Him and the Flash soon engaged in combat beneath the waves, where Changeling transformed into a shark as the Flash drowned and slammed his opponent's head into a rock to kill him in self-defense. His power is that of teriantropy, which in simple words means that Razar can transform himself into any animal he desires. The term teriantropy is a Greek term where terion means wild animal and anthropos means human. 
Top. The Top, aka Roscoe Dillon, was a small-time crook working at the fair. The Top developed his abilities in the original comic book plot after putting his body through rigorous concentration practice where he learned that he could control centrifugal forces. His powers depended entirely on his natural talent and were unrelated to outside factors such as radiation exposure or a laboratory mishap. However, The Top's origin was changed in later comic book adaptations. For instance, in one interpretation of the character's history, he acquired his abilities due to exposure to a radioactive chemical. In a different incarnation, he used a helmet to manipulate gravity. The top robbed a bank to make this bad guy debut. He utilized his ability to spin at superhuman speeds to generate a potent whirlwind, trapping the Flash and allowing himself to escape. Initially, he could wield tops of his design that could be used as weapons. However, lately, his ability was enhanced and he gained massive psionic or psychic abilities, including mind control, moving objects only by his mind, etc. In some adaptations, the top can also also be seen possessing reality warping abilities. However, the most significant surge in his powers comes post his death when he discovers that he can possess the bodies of the recently deceased. He takes over the body of Henry Allen, who happens to be the father of the Flash. Cobalt Blue. The most intriguing thing about Cobalt Blue, aka Malcolm Thorne, is that he is Barry Allen's twin. Yes, that's right, the Flash has a twin brother. Malcolm was taken away from his family at birth and given to the Thorns to conceal a significant mistake made by the Doctor. The Thorne family inherited the mystical powers of the Blue Flame, which they used to con people as they were con artists. Malcolm could never understand why he was the only member of the Thorne family without access to this occult ability. After seeing his adopted grandmother for the first time, he preferred a desire to study the mysterious art of the Blue Flame. Malcolm discovered that the Blue Flame was much more potent than the Thorns had thought. The Blue Flame could steal anything you wanted. The Blue Flame was then inserted into Malcolm's talisman on his chest. That was the short version of how Malcolm Thorn transformed into Cobalt Blue. Malcolm started utilizing his abilities to seek revenge on Barry, whom he held responsible for his miserable life. Cobalt Blue used his flame skills to try and destroy everything Barry held dear as the two turned into fear rivals. By tapping into his talisman, Malcolm can access his abilities, which include creating objects out of his flame, his favorite being a flaming sword. He can harness his hatred for Barry and steal things and powers. Mostly, he is seen stealing super speed from the Flash. Chill Blaine. Several super bad guys who had dated Golden Glider go by the name Chill Blaine. Using freeze gun technology created by Captain Cold, who happens to be the Glider's brother, she recruits them as her crime associates. As a result, they are frequently powerful but not very intelligent. In the DC universe, there were four Chill Blaines. When Eclipso took over Glider and became possessed, the original Chill Blaine was killed. Before they were dumped as lovers, Chill Blaine 2 and Chill Blaine 3 had relatively short careers. The latest one to use name was Chillblaine 4. Chillblaine frequently uses cutting-edge tools and weapons like freeze gun technology to commit his crimes and fight the Flash. Although the Flash is fast and has lightning-fast responses, Chillblaine has proven to be a strong foe and a constant threat to the Flash. Since he is highly skilled in using various high-tech gadgets and weapons, including cryogenic weaponry such as freeze guns and cryo grenades, he additionally uses pulse guns and other weapons that fire energy bursts. Inertia. Inertia, aka Thaddeus Thorne, is the grandson of Barry Allen, the Flash. The heated conflict between the Thorne and the Allen families spanned generations. Inertia was created using the Thorne and Allen family DNA to create another super speedster. This little speedster developed slowly, making him more meticulous and calculated. Additionally, Thaddeus was trained to hate the Allens and Impulse, aka Bart Allen, in particular. His goal as the reverse Impulse was to travel across time and take Bart's place, but he was quickly stopped. Later, he ambushed Bart and imprisoned him in a virtual world while assuming his identity on Earth. He then went ahead and tried killing Impulse's mentor, Max Mercury. However, as Inertia watched Impulse rush to save his master, he saw love and trust, leaving his existence in the dark and barren. Unlike other speedsters in the DC Universe, Thaddeus can change time relative to himself. He can avoid the typical issues that other Flash-like speedsters face, such as seeing and hearing at near-light speeds, friction, etc. Thanks to the temporal nature of his speed. The quirkiest of all powers of inertia is that he can move people backward in their timelines, stealing their time. The Shade in the early 1800s, Richard Swift was a wealthy business person in London. He was once hired to import a lion. Little did he know that he was unknowingly part of a mysterious ritual and would be sacrificed to the goddess Skathak. 
Swift, however, for unexplained reasons, was endowed with remarkable abilities. Swift left his previous existence and was reincarnated as the Shade. He succeeded in the phase shift that trapped the residents of Keystone City and made the rest of the world forget that the city ever existed with the Fiddler and the Thinker. They plundered the city with impunity. Barry Allen and Jay Garrick engaged them and the Flash duo vanquished Shade and his allies. He's been both a villain and a hero. This can be seen through his first appearance as Flash's adversary, but later he mentored Starman in Opal City, a villain with access to a magical cane that allowed him to cast total darkness instantly. Shade is the most potent channeler of the Darklands shadow forces. There are no known distance restrictions on how far he may teleport and he can also travel through time using this realm. He basically cannot be destroyed and is practically immortal. The Fiddler. The Fiddler was born into a wealthy aristocratic family and they named him Isaac Bowen. He was soon hit with a passion for travel, so he quickly ran out of money, turned to petty theft and started to drift. Bowen eventually found himself in an Indian prison where he befriended a fakir who trained him in hypnosis through sound. Bowen created a violin that allowed him to control the sound. He killed the fakir after surpassing his teachings and broke out of jail. He set out on a new adventure as the Fiddler using his newly acquired knowledge and tools. The Fiddler ran across the Flash multiple times while doing his evil deeds. He joined forces with some other villains throughout that time. The Fiddler has frequently used his violin to try to gain the upper hand in their numerous encounters, while the Flash has relied on his speed and agility to avoid strikes and retaliate. The Fiddler's ability to project a hypnotic melody that can control minds and produce potent illusions that deceive people is directly related to his magic violin. Using this talent, he can make himself appear bigger or smaller than he is. In some versions, versions of the DC Universe, the Fiddler's violin may also release energy beams or bolts that can harm or destroy objects. The Rival Edward Clarice, known by many as The Rival or The Rival Flash, was a chemistry professor. He thought he had replicated the secret of the Flash's speed, a formula called Velocity 9. Due to the rejection by the scientific community of his study claims, Clarice turned to crime and donned a more sinister version of the Flash's attire. However, the effects of the formula were only short-lived and once it was used up, he wasn't as invincible. He attained light speed during his fight with the Flash and disappeared into the Speed Force. Five decades past his disappearance, Clarice was brought back from the Speed Force dimension by Johnny Sorrow, an interdimensional villain who also assisted Clarice in joining the Injustice Society. While the rival was on a super speed killing rampage, the Flash could absorb his speed and he was reabsorbed into the speed dimension. He had a variety of powers similar to the Flash's. However, the most impressive ability of the rival seems to be vibration manipulation, which lets him vibrate his molecules at different frequencies, allowing him to phase through objects or create sonic booms. The Ragdoll The Ragdoll has been featured as an adversary of the Flash in numerous DC comics. Peter Merkel, also known as Ragdoll, is a supervillain whose extraordinary flexibility allows him to bend his limbs and joints in impossible ways. As a result, he excels at gymnastics and acrobatics and is a deadly enemy in battle. Ragdoll is a well-known and frequently underrated character in the DC Universe due to his unusual demeanor and quirky appearance. Ragdoll's skills vary depending on the representation, with some versions highlighting his contortionist talents and others giving him superhuman strength and agility. Ragdoll runs into the Flash while attempting to commit a robbery. He is quickly defeated and imprisoned. Over the years, he and Flash have remained bitter adversaries. Ragdoll has three joints naturally, which gives him a lot of elasticity, durability and flexibility. He is a good thief and a capable fighter, but he typically uses surprise and stealth while fighting foes. He developed into a skilled hypnotist through his effective speaking abilities as he got older. Rose and the Thorn Rose Canton from the Rose and Thorn was a little girl who experienced the early loss of her mother and later had to be treated for psychological trauma after her father passed away under mysterious circumstances. Rose was finally let out of the institution at the age of 15. The quiet little girl quickly realized that she now had a violent split personality named Thorn and that her life was anything from ordinary. Her new self would do whatever it took to uncover the truth about their father's death and bring those guilty to justice. It is interesting to know that Rose Canton was the name of the first Rose and Thorn, a four of the first Flash. But this figure is now formally dead. The second Rose and Thorn, Rosin Forest, rose to prominence in the DC Universe as a protagonist. Although Thorn lacks supernatural abilities, her father taught her martial arts and she is incredibly athletic. She is believed to carry out an array of weapons like daggers, barbed whips and a bandolier of tiny thorn-shaped weapons, some of which are loaded with explosives. 
explosives, mini smoke bombs, or magnesium flares that can blind opponents. In some reports, it is said that Rose Canton's thorn personality gained some control over plant life after coming into contact with the sap of a rare tropical plant, notably over plants with thorns. Rose's physical transformation into the villainous thorn was similarly brought about by the sap. Thorn shared Rose's in-depth understanding of botany and plant-related poisons. However, Rosin Lynn Forrest's version of Thorn has numerous personas and is an expert in hand-to-hand -hand combat. On. My name is Magenta. <laughs> Magenta. Frances realized she could manipulate magnetic fields when she was a teenager, but she had trouble controlling her powers. She transformed into the evil Magenta and used her abilities for personal gain after being tricked by a criminal organization. Magenta can produce destructive magnetic storms, making her a powerful foe for heroes like The Flash. A fun fact about Magenta is that she and Wally West, aka The Flash, dated during his time in the Teen Titans, which created a challenging dichotomy between the good guy and the bad guy. One well-known instance is the conflict at the Central City Baseball Stadium. Her capacity to generate and control magnetic fields makes her extremely powerful. Francis can direct her abilities to create bursts of magnetic energy that can shatter even the toughest metals or destroy electronic systems. She can channel her magnetic power into a barrier that repels most physical attacks. She can also fly through magnetic levitation by surrounding herself with an aura of magnetism. The Turtle The Turtle is a self-made wealthy scientist who makes marvelous inventions based on slowness. He was a slow-talking, slow-moving criminal who concluded that, ironically, moving slowly was the best way to deal with the Flash's super speed. Interestingly, once he robbed a bank, and people searched outside the bank for him. However, this so-called genius hid inside the bank and slowly escaped once the coast was clear. However, he had the misfortune of being captured by the Flash. The turtle felt that once the Flash was going at super speed, he couldn't turn, slow down, or stop swiftly. In perpetrating his crimes, he tried to take advantage of this supposed liability. The turtle is undoubtedly intelligent, however, he lacks some of the quirks of a powerful villain. For instance, the not-so-ninja turtle is so slow and out of shape that he is a terrible hand-to-hand -hand combatant. However, he uses a technology that allows him to produce a force field around himself that can stop bullets. Pretty neat, huh? The turtle's shell also acts as armor for his body and head. The most remarkable trick the turtle can do is launch his entire shell at his enemies like a missile with the help of inbuilt rockets. The Folded Man Edwin Gauss a physics nerd at MIT wanted to demonstrate Einstein's unified field theory. After a lot of work, including stealing software from electronics tycoon Norman Bridges, Goss developed a way to move between dimensions. He created a suit that enabled his physical form to move fluidly through at least four dimensions. This invention was just the beginning of Gauss's troubles. Bridges, who believed Gauss's suit was his property, followed Gauss to seize the technology for himself. Goss disguised himself as the folded man, a costumed criminal. His new criminal profession pitted him against Wally West, the third Flash. His abilities allow him to vanish from reality when, in fact, he passes from one dimension to the next. This gives him great unpredictability regarding where and how he can attack. Not only can the folded man switch dimensions, he's also capable of trapping others into it. The deadliest of all his abilities is turning individuals into two-dimensional shapes, which promptly kills them. Blunder. Flash's opponents have left no stone unturned to eliminate him. This time, they've called an excellent marksman from an alternate Mirror Universe, a result of Mirror Master's technology. In a twisted, chaotic world, the rogues meet a like-minded assassin named Plunder, a bounty hunter and mercenary who works for the Thinker. The rogues employ him to attack the city. Despite his lack of abilities, Plunder is a skilled marksman and a warrior. He employs a customized weapon that can fire regular bullets and a laser and tracking equipment. He also has a boomerang-like device attached to his mask, which he can detach and use. Tar Pit. Joey Monteleone abandoned the family business in favor of petty crime. While confined in Iron Heights for armed robbery, he found that he could transfer his consciousness into inanimate objects and bring them to life. 
He took many objects for a joyride before becoming trapped in a pool of asphalt and giving him the name Tar Pit. In his new avatar, Tar Pit initially wreaked havoc at an ice hockey game, attempting to steal the winning trophy for himself. He was stopped there by Flash and Captain Cold after a fierce battle. Joey could have been one of the most powerful supervillains if he could still project his consciousness into inanimate objects. Nonetheless, Tar Pit's body is formed of molten asphalt and burns when touched. He can entrap humans in the material of his body and fling burning pieces of tar at his opponents. Brother Grimm, the ruler of another realm, blamed Wally West for pushing him to murder his brother and take the throne. Grimm devised a strategy to defeat the Flash and seize control of Central City. Grimm imprisoned Wally the Flash in a mirror universe devoid of the Speed Force, where the Flash wouldn't be the fastest man. Mirror Master worked with the Flash to leave the universe and combat Grimm, resulting in his defeat. Murmur. From the evil entrepreneur of the past to the tyrants of a different dimension, supervillains can go to any lengths to accomplish their desires. Here we have Michael Christian Armour, a surgeon who went nuts for unexplained reasons. He went on a murdering spree, convinced that it would silence the voices in his head. He was sentenced to be executed by lethal injection, which failed due to his irregular bloodstream. Amar's madness is made worse by his inability to stop confessing to his crimes. He rips out his tongue and sews his mouth while imprisoned to prevent himself from incriminating himself. The evil doctor then smuggles in the components needed to develop his lethal virus. He spreads the virus across prison facilities, resulting in scores of deaths and a mass breakout. The mad surgeon possesses some mad abilities, like he has peculiar blood chemistry, which makes him resistant to numerous viruses and poisons. Blacksmith Amunet Black, aka Blacksmith, has been operating a network, an underground black market enabling supervillains to buy and sell contraband in the twin cities of Central City and Keystone City. She also has a brief marriage with Goldface, a criminal scientist. After their divorce, she stole some of his formulae and had it tweaked, allowing her to combine metal and flesh. She used this power to fuse her flesh with an ebony metal, hence the name The Blacksmith. Blacksmith, being cunning that she is, had the Flash's comrades removed or incapacitated. Finally, Murmur and the Mirror Master 3 targeted radio stations, reprogramming the antennas to broadcast a mirror shield around the Twin Cities, preventing anyone from entering or leaving. Finally, Blacksmith was defeated when the Flash left her stranded on a barge in the middle of a river. She couldn't go in the water, too afraid of rusting her metal skin. Peekaboo. Lashawn Bays was a graduate student at the City Medical School. She had to put her education on hold to care for a sick father who desperately needed a kidney transplant. Lashawn was adamant about donating her organ. However, her metagene was strangely activated through the transplant process. She was unlocking her teleportation ability. It didn't take long for this blessing to turn into a curse. Every time she tried to undertake organ transplant surgery, her teleportation powers kicked in and she disappeared. She then appeared as Peekaboo and sneaked inside Central City Hospital to steal a kidney. However, because her powers were still unstable and dangerous, she accidentally destroyed a lab. Peekaboo was then forced to face the Flash and his ally Cyborg. After considerable struggle, they could beat her with a wall of white sound made by Cyborg's arm, combined with disorientation from being teleported hundreds of times per second when the Flash purposefully activated her powers. Despite her desire to be a hero, her inexperience and instability during her meetings with Flash resulted in her being classified as a criminal. Conclusion The DC Universe has created a plethora of villains who have fascinated fans for years. The Flash's rogues gallery is as broad as it is dangerous, ranging from Heatwave and Captain Cold to more current ones like Godspeed and Bloodwork. The complexity of these villains is what makes them so appealing. While some are motivated by greed or a desire for power, others are motivated by more sympathetic impulses such as wanting vengeance or trying to rescue a loved one. They are not single-dimensional characters, but rather have layers of complexity that distinguish them as some of comic book history's most compelling antagonists. Do you agree? Let us know if we will need to include any of your favorites. Thanks for geeking out with us today. See you fellas in the following video. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.